Kia ora, Marcia. Kia ora. Thank you for inviting us to the gallery today. It's a real pleasure to be here. So one of the things that came up is that you're one of the longest running art dealers in Wellington? Potentially Aotearoa? Ah, yes, potentially. So yes, when, did you, when did you start? Well, I actually opened my first gallery in 1987, uh, six weeks after the share market crash, which was a pretty, pretty bad timing. Um, and since then, the galleries had several iterations and several locations. So whereabouts, what locations have you been So we in? started off in Tinakori Road, mm -hmm. and the reason that I chose Thorndon was that at the time it was the only place that had Saturday opening. Oh, wow. So, um, so I was there for about 13 years and then decided uh, that downtown would be, uh, a, we'd get much more passing traffic, which we did have. So we were in Featherston Street for uh, six years and then the opportunity to acquire a place that would be long term came up here and, and uh, choose the choose lane development and um, I love the historic associations of this place because this was originally the first arcade in Wellington the Dominion Arcade. This was the Dominion Arcade yes. so what were some of the shops that were here? Uh, well there were four shops in this gallery uh, and each had um, a downstairs and a mezzanine and each had its own stairway so there was a um, a watchmaker and a, a boot mender and a jeweler and a cafe. Um, wow. And so when it was redeveloped in, uh, must have been about 2010, 2011, um, it, it, this was made into one big unit. And unfortunately, the, it, uh, the walk through to Willow Street was blocked off, um, which is a, an awful shame. But we have got uh, we are planning to put images of how it was on in some of our windows. I've been to quite a few openings here and you've got some really incredibly established artists and you also have some new emerging artists like Nagin. So how do you find these artists or do they find you? Uh, it's a bit of both really. Uh, with the senior artists, invariably we would approach them, uh, although they occasionally have approached us. Uh, with the younger artists, and we've tried to really diversify, I suppose the word is, um, our stable, uh, in that um, to encourage different audiences um, into the gallery. And so we actively have been out looking uh, for uh, younger artists. And um, we love it if they approach us. We always try and be extremely positive, even if they we feel that they don't wouldn't fit into the gallery. But uh, so this year we've had a, a, an active program of younger artists who uh, that they are given a space, and we see how their work um, goes, whether they think we think they'd fit in with the gallery, mm. whether our clients uh, respond to their work. So on. So Nagin is the, the third artist that we've actually had. Oh uh, yeah, so. because I have noticed. I don't know if it's intentional, but you have quite a few artists from Massey. So I know you've got Jasmine. She's studying at Massey. I'm actually in the same class, and you've got um, Natai as well. And who else? Uh, just trying to think. But um, is that purposeful? Do you go to those institutions um, looking for them? No, or they no, not you? necessarily. I mean, it's wonderful to uh, be showing artists that uh, are living mm. in Wellington, and there's a number of our artists now live in Wellington. But no, it's it's not a, a deliberate sort of thing. Although Massey is our art centre in in Wellington, our art, uh, tertiary art uh, education place. Um, but no, it's not necessarily. It's uh, really any artist whose work we respond to. So, um, so you say that there's a panel that decides who you uh, have well, on board? Well, there's three, three of us, uh, and sometimes Ryan, who also works here. Uh, so it has to be fairly much a, a mutual decision. Excellent, yeah. that's good. Um, and so do you have any artists that you particularly like? Oh yes, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> you have to say that. Yeah, I do. <laughs> and, and what is it about um, Nagin's work that you appreciate? Uh, there's a lovely gentleness uh, about it and 
uh, Nagin has, she's been, she is a Massey student originally, but she's, uh, I think she did postgrad in, in Christchurch. Um, and I think coming out of Christchurch to have that gentleness mm. and sense of well-being through the natural world is, is a very important thing to all of us at the moment. Yeah, it is. Well, kia ora, nice to see you again. Um, it started off at the beginning of the year because um, I, I sailed with the Tahitians on their wonderful waka Fafaiti as part of the Tuia 250. And this exhibition was going to be about voyaging. Uh, and I was well into it, obviously, um, when COVID turned up. Mm. And uh, at the same time, um, uh, the storms blasted down the east coast and revealed the folly of uh, monoculture pine on that uh, fragile environment and, and it just the devastation was just mammoth and you know it's like my mother has been raped mm. <clears throat> yeah i saw a video and it was um like a river and it was a torrent and it had all these pine trees that had been felled and not clear just streaming yeah, yeah. down and just knocking everything out of the way and i can see buildings that, yeah it was livelihoods amazing it's it, like it's, this is new zealand it's not that yeah. clean green environment no not at all it it, and i see that you've got a documentary <coughs> where you've got some footage over there as well that shows the devastation yeah so how do you think your artwork can portray or tell stories that potentially film documentation can't it's all it's all meshed together you know, and uh, this is um, because of the um, uh, Tuia 250, the only way I could um, be in contact with them all was on Facebook. So I, I had to join Facebook. <laughs> and ever since then, I'm in the, I'm writing that pony. <laughs> Welcome and, to the 21st century, John. <laughs> <laughs> and so this whole exhibition, and especially the Uawa stuff, is uh, it's all over, and, and especially the iwi back there on the coast, uh, it's, it's getting in there, and uh, it's hitting the right places. And uh, so that's, you know, that's how this, this exhibition is. You know, these are just paintings on the wall, but the reach is far greater, mm. and that's, uh, that's been great. Again, lovely of you to give some time up for us today. So tell me, is this your first dealer gallery show? Um, yes, in New Zealand. I lived in New York for one year and I exhibited through um, a gallery there called Three Walls. Um, but this is my first um, yeah, dealer gallery show in New Zealand. Oh, wow. Yeah. And we were just talking about your family. They came here from Iran. Is it Iran or uh, Iran? Iran? Iran, yeah. So they came here after the revolution in, in the mid 80s. And um, I was born in Christchurch, but um, I sort of grew up with the, the stories of um, their history there and having to go through a revolution and move to a new country and that sort of thing. Because mm. I'm looking at your work here and it's quite botanical, mm. but do you ever reference Iran mm. in your work? Yeah, so I kind of went through three stages in my art where I was looking at um, my family's memories um, and then after that, my own memories, and now I'm looking at nature and the connection through these bodies of work has been the idea of home and where I feel at home. So at the moment I'm, I'm painting um, nature because that's where I feel most at home and um, home in myself. And um, yeah, I was thinking about whether my Iranian background has affected the paintings and um, I think it has in a way with the sort of pattern making that's coming through and the colours. Mm. Yeah. So um, I understand you also work as an art therapist. Mm, what I does do. that involve? Um, so that works, um, so that's working with someone in a creative way to make sense of what's going on inside through the art making process. Yeah, so that could mean a lot of different things, but um, 
yeah, it's using art as a tool. Yeah. I love that. And I guess too, that um, reminds me of uh, Vincent's, who we talked to, mm. they also use art as mm. therapy. And I guess you use it as therapy too, mm. maybe. Yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. all artists use art as therapy. I think so, yeah. Mm. And do you think there's an advantage of having a data gallery to represent you? I think so. I think it, it's quite hard um, for artists to put themselves out there and um, you know, I think it's, it's quite easy to just sort of create and keep it to yourself and the dealer, the dealer yeah. kind of helps you kind of get it out there in the world. Yeah. And how did you get to be represented in this gallery? Um, so they found me um, through an interview I did with Art Now and Art News and online and then they followed me on Instagram and came to my studio last year. Oh, so. that's awesome. So mm. get interviews in Art News, keep your Instagram up to date. Up to Instagram, yes. And then uh, you'll get into the gallery, you heard it here. Mm. <laughs> Thank you, Nagin. Okay, cool. Thanks.